Hi, I'm Donna Wilder. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central. Today we have talented artists whose works are presented in very different mediums. That's right, Jane. We'll see a long arm thread artist create some spectacular artwork with lots of texture and dimension using different threads and varying stitch lengths. Another guest has an endless supply of great ideas for the sewing machine and serger. The neck roll pillow she creates is a great gift idea. Let's get started. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America, makers of sewing machines and sergers. Janome, because you simply love to sew. APQS offers the Millennium and a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. Sylvia Design Sewing Furniture, designed just for you. JT Trading Corporation, stick with us. Electric Quilt Company. Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. Joining us today is one of the most fabulous and outrageous thread artists I know. She's a celebrity long arm teacher, and I want you to welcome Kathy Frank. Oh, bless you, Janie. <laughs> I have never seen things done like you do, and it's such a wide range of things. I'd like to know a little bit more about how you do all the different things, dyeing and the thread work and everything. Well, it's really simple, Janie. What I do is I take classes all over the country, and I learn from other people, and then I incorporate them into my own work. Oh, and so then you teach the classes. Then I teach the classes the way I've adapted them to the way I do things. Okay. So that way there's no right and wrong way to do things. It's just your way of doing things. Your dyed fabrics are so different. Can you give us some tips on how those are done? Well, it's a really simple process. What you do, it's called shibori folding, and it's how you fold up the fabric, roll it, uh, put string, rope, twine. You can use paper clips. You can use clamps, anything on the fabric. Then you dip the black fabric that you know will discharge to a color that will accept another dye into a solution of 50% bleach and 50% water. So you always start with black. Always start with black. Well, a dark color, like a dark navy, a dark purple, a dark color okay. that will discharge out. Then you dip it into the solution of 50% bleach, 50% water, leave it sit for five to 10 minutes, no more, because if you leave it in too long, it will degrade the fabric. Okay. Then you remove it from the bleach and you put it in a solution of anti-chlor with water. That stops the bleaching uh, action. And then you put the dye on. Okay, and how do you get the dye on? You can either leave it all folded up or unfold it any way you want to, but I just put different colors of dyes into squirt bottles and just squirt it all like over a ketchup there. Ketchup bottle and ketchup bottle, whatever. Then you let it sit and I let it sit overnight and it's like Christmas when you get up the next morning. You have no clue what you're going to have, but usually it's good. So it's in the folding too. It's in the folding and it's in how the colors meld together when you squirt them on the dye. Okay, and you have a wonderful dragon quilt too. Oh, thank you. Thank you, you have, uh, how did you get some of the thread on that or how did you start with that piece? Well, the dragon quilt is made with what I call the long stitch and it's a technique I learned from a quilter named Melody Johnson and she taught it to me on a regular home machine and I thought, I bet I can do this on a long uh -huh. arm and I experimented and I could. Okay. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do this on a long arm. <laughs> you can. Well, I learned something from you. I used to think that you had to thread these machines like the thread chart and I watched you pass up some guides so that you could get a real weak thread to run and I I was like, no, 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 you can't do that. But your threads ran beautifully. So now I have learned that 
you can do things beyond the books. Well, I just throw the rule book right out the door <laughs> and, and just go for it. I mean, life is too short. We've got to have fun. Yeah. Rules, rules, rules just keep us from being happy people, you know. Okay. But the way you do the long stitch, it's very, very easy. Let's see some of that or see what you've got here. This is a parrot that I did. Actually, this was the first piece that I did with the long stitch. The background is a batik piece that I purchased, and I just cov covered it with the thread colors. The secret to the long stitch, it's actually a long stitch. So it looks you, like satin. Right, it looks like satin. The way you achieve the long stitch is you turn your machine speed way down and so slowly. You get what old older quilters called toe hookers. Oh, okay. You want those with this type yeah, of Yeah, because that's really thick. It's a good quarter of an inch thick. It's piled up there, the thread is. And your machine can go through it. The reason why this is so thick, this is a jean stitch type thread. But it can go through because it's soft and loopy. Correct. It can go through because it's soft and loopy. The kind of thread you use can really, uh, it is really the thing that will show you what your outcome will look like. Okay, this is with the stuff. jean stitch thread. This is with a 50 weight thread. You can see the difference between how fine this yeah, is and how much. heavy that is. The way you want to look at your thread is you want to lay it out and you want to see how thick your thread is. That's how you judge how dense your, your finished product is going to be. Okay. That's the way you do that. So with the dragon quilt, I used the jean stitch thread because I wanted a big impact with uh -huh. it big impact with the color. And if you wanted something finer, you just use a thinner thread. I would use a thinner thread. Go to a 50 weight, even a 60 weight. Could we see a little bit about how you do that with a long arm? Okay. The way you prepare your fabric is very important. Before I put the fabric on the machine, I soaked my fabric in liquid starch. 100% liquid starch. Just go to the grocery store and get that cheap blue bottle of liquid starch. Soak it in there, wring it out, shake it out, let it dry until it's almost dry, then take it over and press it. That way it'll press nice and flat. Then I also put a piece of either iron on or based on interfacing on the back of it. Tear away. Stabilize it. Stabilize it. Tear away stabilizer so it can give it some tooth when we're actually doing this. Okay. Because we're only doing this on a single layer of fabric. Oh, no batting and no backing. No batting and no backing. Thread. And unlike regular quilting, we actually pull our leaders very, very tight. Yep, I can tell that. It's like tight. a drum. I have turned this machine now into a gigantic embroidery hoop. Okay. That's what makes doing this on the long arm so much fun. That's what, that's what really works. What you're going to do, again, turn your speed down low and you're going to go slowly. And your machine is not going to like this, but that's just too bad. <laughs> we are being artists. So what you're going to do is just stitch. The direction, see how I'm making these long stitches. Satin stitches. Long satin stitches. The direction that you quilt in is very, very important because you want to make it look like whatever you are quilting. So with these leaves, do you see you how I am flowing with the leaf? Giving it shape. I'm giving it shape. I'm giving it a little substance. I am not a trained artist, so I cheat. I go to art books, like black and white line drawing books, and see how those artists shaded whatever they're working on, and I just follow their lines. You can also go out to Mother Nature, get a leaf, look at the way the veining is on the leaf, and quilt in that direction. It's simple. It's simple. It's beautiful. Thank it's you. Beautiful, but you definitely have the knack for knowing how things flow along. Well, it's you just look around. You absorb nature. Then when you get all that satin stitch done, do you back that again? Reback this or put batting in it or anything like Once that? Once you've gotten all of the long stitch done, and you want to do the long stitch just on your single layer of fabric because it can distort the fabric. You don't want to do this on a quilt. You want to do it on a single layer of fabric. Once you're finished, then you can take this off, press it, 
square it up, then add your borders to it. Okay. Then put your batting and your backing on it. But if you did this on a quilt that was already uh, ready for you to quilt, you would distort it so badly. Because it just pull in it would, it, all it that It pulls in. Was. You just can't help but do that. You just can't help but do that. That is wonderful. And the way that you get the different colors in the quilt is when you are putting your long stitch in, you can really build this thread up pretty thickly. But you, if you are going to be blending colors in, like I did in the parrot, you want to leave a little room so you can put some more thread colors in. And that's what gives the life and the body to whatever you're doing. You can add other colors How into the quilt. How deep have you stacked that up? I've stacked that up to where it's a good eighth of an inch thick or more. Oh. I just stitch it, Janie, till the needle won't go through anymore. <laughs> then I stop. Okay. It's an easy thing. <laughs> Now you have also brought us something else that you do. Oh, the needle lace. The needle lace is a wonderful, wonderful technique that you can do. Again, it's the same principle as the long stitch. You get a substance that is either a boil away or a heat away or a hot water dissolvable, but it has to be sturdy enough to be able to pin. That's like a piece of fabric because it's woven. It's actually woven. This is a fabric that I found in New York that is made for the needle lace industry, and it's almost like a silk. It and it's is. very solid, it's very stable. But it's a wash away or dissolve. It is a boil away. You oh, put it in away. boiling water and it boils away completely. It's a fabulous product. And what you do, again, you put it on your machine and you pull it taut. Very important, you want this to be like a drum. Okay. Then again, the secret to doing this type of work, to doing the needle lace type of work, is, let me just bring this machine up here. Let's so see a piece of that lace here. Yeah, let me show you a piece of the lace. This is what we're going for. You can do things, this is all out of thread. This is needle lace. Okay. Let me move this out of the way. This, this is needle here. lace. This, this is needle lace too? Is needle lace. So you could add that like to pillowcases. There is a quilt that I made at MQS that got viewer's choice and the wings of the quilt, which is this quilt right here, the wings of this quilt are made using this technique. Uh, that is beautiful. But again, notice the Tatting. different threads. This is important. This is a very heavy duty jean stitch thread. Look at this thread the one. versus the 60 weight embroidery thread. Uh -huh. That's the difference between the threads. So you really have to play with your threads. Ooh, the look that, that you're going like to get. To me. The looks that you're going to get. Now the secret to doing this needle lace is how you lay the base down. And what you want to do, because you're boiling this away, you're going to bring your bobbin thread up to the top, and then you're going to bring the needle back up and you're going to pick up that bobbin thread because you don't want to get a bunch of bird's nests under there. Then I'm going to lower the needle again and we're going to start. Now the key to doing this is you interlock all the stitches because if you don't, when you boil it away, all you're going to have is a strand of thread. And it'll just fall apart. It'll just fall apart. So the way you lay your base down depends on if you're going to have a solid looking piece such as this piece, which is solid. That's a lot of thread. You betcha. The thread companies love it too. <laughs> or you want to have a lacy one like the little lacy pieces that we did. For a solid colored piece, the way you're going to lay this down is you're going to make a grid and then you're just going to fill the grid in. Back and forth, back and forth, up and down, up and down. With the big stitches. You can do it with the big stitches right now. Then increase the spit, uh, speed here of this machine a little bit. Then what you're going to do is just start filling this in. And again, the direction that you're sewing is important to your finished product. And what I'm doing is all of these stitches are interlocking with each other. So when I put it in the boiling water, the hot water, or the iron, they will hold together. See how I'm just building up on top of each other? Uh -huh. Okay, that is for a solid piece. You do this. For the little wing or the, the wing oh. on the dragonfly or the needle lace that I do, the way you do that is you make circles that interlock 
with each other. And then you just keep going over and over and over and over the circles. But see how they have to interlock. They must interlock with each other. And you can do this. When I did the wings of the dragonfly, I spent close to eight hours of doing this over oh. and over <laughs> and over again. You know, that's a really good time to put on your tape of Quilt Central and listen to it. You can't watch it, but you can listen to it. Get all the tech tips. <laughs> right. So you keep doing that until you get the size now of when, the needle lace that you when want. When you boil that, how long do you boil it? Or just stand there and watch it the whole time? No, no, no. You can. You, what I do is I can actually just cut this out, and this particular product is so uh, stable that I can actually sew it together and reuse it. So when I do this, I cut close to the edges so I don't waste any of it. Then I get my water boiling. I throw it in the pot of boiling water, five, 10 minutes. You know, I'll go get a cup of coffee, watch something on TV, come back, look at it. Then I'll either get a wooden spoon or my spaghetti strainer or whatever, pull it out, see if all of it has disappeared. If it has, then I lay it on a soft towel and let it air dry. Then when it's all dry, then I take a hot iron and press it. Just press it. Just press it. And I have used every kind of thread I can think of, and everything's been able to go through the boiling water. What is so nice about this is I've now made my own applique. I don't have to go out and buy an expensive applique. Oh, yeah. You could even do your favorite ball team letter. You can do whatever, whatever you want. And what you do is you press it flat, and then you can put it on whatever you want to put it on applique and right stitch on. it down, applique it down. So when I stitch down the wings of the dragonfly, I just use the same color of thread that I had. Now, one secret to doing this type of work is you really want to have the same color of thread in the bobbin as you do in the top because this will show. So I have a sample of the correct way to do it, which is the green. And you can see it's the same on both top and bottom. On this one, this one looks great, but I purposely put black in the bobbin oh, because you can see it. Shadow. But you know what? That's not a mistake, Janie. It looks kind of cool that way, don't you <laughs> yes. think? So I could use that too. Yep. I thank you so much for showing us these secrets because we have wanted to know for a long time how that long satin stitch was done and how you get such detail into your dyed work. So thank you for coming. Oh, thank you, Janie. Go out there and play. Have fun with that thread. I will. <laughs> Using a serger can be a quick way to do a project, and I have a person who is an expert with the serger with me today. Joining me is Maddie Bushman. Welcome, Maddie. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I can't tell you how delighted I am to be back with you again. That's great. Now, what are we going to work on today? Today, we're going to be doing a serger necro pillow cover. With this project, it gives you an opportunity to test out some of the different stitches that are available on the serger and to use some decorative threads as well. Great. Now, how do you get started on a project like well, this? Well, the first thing we do is we start with a center panel that's about six inches wide by 45 inches long. Okay. And that usually is cotton. Mm -hmm. We usually try to use some cotton. And first thing we do is we would fold it in half lengthwise. Mm -hmm. and press a crease in it. Okay. Okay. Then we would take our ruler and our water erasable marking pen mm -hmm. and then we would mark a line an inch. For demonstration purposes we're just going to show a little bit. Uh -huh. And then you turn it over on the other side and draw another inch line. Okay? okay. Then you would take that to the ironing board and you would press those creases in, but careful not to take out the center fold press okay. line. Okay? Then once you've done that, mm -hmm. then you want to take it to the serger and do your rolled hem, which is 
same as the serger tucking. Okay, let's okay. do that. In order to do that, we need to make sure that we have a nylon thread in the upper looper, okay. and then we also want to disengage the stitch finger to achieve our rolled hem. Good. Okay, so we're going to first start out, we're going to use probably about a quarter of an inch seam allowance on the first one. Now what you want to make sure you do is start with the fold that was the furthest to the left. Now, let me ask you a question. Normally, when you use a serger, there's a cutting action that takes place. Is that right. happening now, too? Yes. Some people don't like to cut when they're doing a rolled hem. Uh -huh. I like to cut sometimes, not always, so that I establish a straight line and a seam between the two tucks. Okay. So we're going to give a little start here and show. You can see how beautifully this starts out and what a nice full stitch that we get. It's just gorgeous. Oh, that really looks nice. I know, and you know, it's so easy to do this, and you just want to make sure that you do follow that line. Uh-huh. And try to sew as straight as you can. There are other uh, feet accessories that you can use. You could use a blind hem foot if you wanted to make sure that you sewed straight, if you had a uh -huh. problem with that. Now, you can see how beautifully that turned out. Oh, that Isn't that gorgeous? Nice. Yeah. Yes. So then the next time when you go, you want to make sure that you have, you see, now I can use my foot. To guide on the first one. Exactly. And that'll, and that'll make straight. each one of them absolutely the same, equidistant apart, and you'll have uniform stitches. Well, let's look at some of the other fabrics that you selected on this project. Exactly. You know what? It is so nice because you have such a variety to choose from. Uh -huh. This is just curtain lace. Oh, it's great. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes you have pieces laying around and you can yes. use those. And then I used a nice cotton. Mm -hmm. Then we have our Clooney lace. Mm -hmm. You know, it's limitless. You can use whatever types of fabrics that you want to. Great. Now, how did you join them together? Now you can see here, we changed and we did flat locking. All right. And we put some heavy decorative thread uh -huh. into our upper looper. Yeah. And we were able to flat lock that center panel to the, the curtain right. lace. Then we went ahead and we were flat locking it to puffing. Uh huh. Now how did you achieve that puffing? Well, you know what? Let me show you. It's just going to take a moment for me to change to the puffing stitch but I'll do that right now. Okay, and let's take a look at that again while she changes. Now, Maddie, tell me what changes you made to the machine. Well, first we changed to four threads. Okay. And then we went and changed the stitch length to four. Okay. And we changed our differential feed to 2.0. Well, let's get zipping on this. Okay, this is so beautiful. Also, we did some changes as far as tightening the needle Look thread tension. That. Isn't that wonderful? Look how quickly and easily that oh, does that. Yes, great. Let's stop and do the other side now. Okay, we can just surge right off. This is really fast and it makes yes. such a nice detailing. It certainly does. And once you get started, you want to make sure that you start the same side both times. Okay. The same end. From so the same end. Good. Exactly. So you have yours in the same direction. And we can just surge off so we can give everybody an idea of oh, how look easily. At how that looks. Isn't that pretty? Now, this is neat to see how it looks. Now, this is another one you did in the white and you've sewn it all together and we're going to show them how it it uh, rolls up. So this is the way the finished piece looks. Right, you Let's end up with over. a uh, rectangle. Yep. And where do you start? Here? Yes. Oh, well, anywhere, you're giving me the test, you huh? like. Okay, and we just roll that up. And if you tie one end and I'll tie one end. Okay, we'll let's show just them. push this through Oops. a little bit. Oh, I didn't do a good job on you it. You did a wonderful job. You could never do a bad job on anything like this. Oh, and we can tie those ends. And Maddie, let me thank you for joining us here today. And we'll take one final look at both of those great pillows. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I just love that elegant neck pillow. It was certainly beautiful, and I really enjoyed seeing Kathy Frank's work. 
Thank you for watching Quilt Central today. Be sure to join us next time for a very inspiring show. Learn to use computer-aided graphics in designing your quilt. And our quilting experts have helpful hints on design and tool choices for machine quilting, as well as batting and hoop-for-hand quilting. See you then. Quilt Around the Clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. Central is made possible in part by Janome America, makers of sewing machines and sergers. Janome, because you simply love to sew. APQS offers the Millennium and a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. Sylvia Design Sewing Furniture, designed just for you. JT Trading Corporation, stick with us. Electric Quilt Company, Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call toll-free at 1-866-PADUCA.